Guys, guys, we have huge news. First of all, we have a 2K gadget. That's amazing because we're done with Alolan eggs. We're done with 7K eggs until that could have been shiny. We're done with Alolan eggs until the next time that, uh, well, we have regionals shiny check. Not a shiny. Um, but the egg hatch was not the cool thing. This is not the cool thing. What's the cool thing is this right here. This somewhere here is the amazing new news that dropped right as I started work. I just got home from Starbucks and, um, well, I'm going to need a lot of coffee. Ah, that's hot. That's really good coffee, actually. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, we got this huge news that dropped just as I was starting work. I just got home from Starbucks. It's 10 o'clock at night. We're starting this. What is this? This is my first time actually watching the video. Full audio. Let me just make sure that I have audio on this. Full thing. Let, let's... We're getting a live reaction right here. Is there a full screen? A vast new world is waking up around us. So that's Turtwig. Chimchar. To explore. Those are little Piplups. Wait, that's only 20 seconds. This is the cool, this is so cool. A vast new world is waking up around us. With more to explore than we could ever have imagined. Okay, right here I want to, I, I want to pause it right there, not on preparation. What are you? Hello? That's so hype. For 20 seconds, that's a lot of hype. I gotta make sure that this is recording. I gotta make sure I'm getting all this. Yes, we're recording. We're good. Okay. What was that? Okay, so, I, like, I've done research on my break and whatnot, and so far this, like, obviously we had Chimchar, Piplup, and Turtwig, which were leaked, like, a month or so ago in, like, official Pokemon Go, like, fan art, or not fan art, but, like, actual Go, like, uh, photo one of those things for like an event and uh, it also had like Scyther a bunch of other like Gen 4 prep Pokemon a bunch of just very cool things like uh, some trading stuff and so a whole lot of coolness and at the end was some legendary Pokemon now honestly I could have been Dialga it could have been uh, the other one <laughs> Gen 4 is where like Gen 1 Gen 2 Gen 3 I knew that I grew up on that that was my that, that was my forte. All right, Gen 4 is where everything starts getting a little foggy. Okay, so, um, could have been, uh, Giratina, could have been Arceus, could have been, um, Dialga, like I said, could have been, uh, Palkia? Could have been a lot of things. Now, a lot of people on, like, Reddit, on Twitter, on GoHub, on everything are, are basically in consensus that it's, uh, Giratina, which is going to be a ghost... And dragon type, I think? I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. But very, very, very cool. Alright. Now, we, we gotta get into the actual, like, the update. Okay? What is actually happening? And here it is. Are you ready for a Sinnoh adventure? We're excited to let you know that in preparation for the arrival of Pokemon originally discovered in the Sinnoh region, Gen 4, uh, we are making two key shifts to the game balance in the coming weeks. These changes are based on trainer feedback and are designed to promote an improved overall experience. Okay, so this is basically they've heard a bunch of our complaints uh, from all the, the Pokemon Go like verse. All right. Um, Th these are things that they want to improve upon based off of like what we've complained about. So here's the first thing. Changes to Pokemon migration and behavior. Now, I have read this. I've read this a few times, and I'm still confused on a couple things. There's the, so, but here we go. And I don't necessarily agree with everything either. Um, let's just get that out of the way. As you explore the world of Pokemon Go, the following changes will affect the Pokemon that appear around you. 
We are making adjustments to weather and moving forward, it will have a reduced effect on the rate at which Pokemon appear. Now, the video that was supposed to be coming out today was actually a shiny hunt where um, I go to Pearson Park, which is was a crabby nest. Um, by the time this video comes out, it probably isn't anymore, but it was a crabby nest, but the weather was windy, and with a Psychic Spectacular, you know, it, it worked out anyway because there's a bunch of Psychic type Pokemon and a couple flying type Pokemon, such as Natu and Murkrow, uh, that are shiny possibilities. Uh, so I wasn't necessarily mad with the windy weather, but that has been a complaint is that during a net, like at a nest, sometimes the weather will make it so that, like, during partly cloudy weather, you might be in a, uh, what's a cool nest? Like a Charmander nest, okay? Looking for a shiny Charmander, okay? Like, you're trying to find these shiny Charmander, and all you get are weather-boosted Pidgeys and weather-boosted Rattata and Sentret and just bleh. So this is to help that out. As you explore a given area, you will notice that a greater variety of Pokemon species will appear over time and at different rates. This is what confuses me. This right here. Does that mean that, like, literally as you're in one area, like, during that time that you are, like, in the area your personal Pokemon Go will start spawning different things as you are in... Like, if I'm at Pearson Park, right? And I'm there for the crappiness, right? If I'm there for, like, an hour, okay, let's say it just stays crappy. But if I go into two hours, right, it starts randomly spawning in Whalmer? Like, is that what it means? I, I don't understand that. I, I, if, if I'm at a place, right, and I'm in that area for a while, that means I'm there for a reason. And I want that reason to stay the same. I, I don't necessarily, like, I'm very confused by that. But on this same hand, like, what if, and th there's going to be a lot of, like, what ifs in this. Let's, let's just get that out of the way right now. Um, let's actually stop the recording, because I'm going to, talk about this and I'll just have a, like a screenshot or something right there. Now, if I'm, if let's say they do it like this, right? Like how you can prestige up a, the gym systems, right? Let's say you can also now do that with Pokestops, right? And like the more you spin those Pokestops, which would mean that more time goes by because five minutes you get to spin the stops. Let's say you can prestige up Pokemon and like the better you prestige up certain Pokestops, those will start like enacting its own sort of like widespread lure effect, let's say. So like if you're in like Pearson and you're there for crabbiness and then there's, you know, random other spawns, right? Like Pidgeys and whatnot and uh, partly cloudy. Let's just stick with partly cloudy because I was talking about Rattatas and Pidgeys. So let's say like, you prestige up to, like, a silver in that area, right? Maybe you start getting, like, better partly cloudy Pokemon, like Geodude, right? And then maybe you get to a gold level in that area, right? Because that means you've been in that area for a long time. Maybe that means that you then get better partly cloudy Pokemon, such as Snorlax, uh, Chansey, Lobitar, stuff like that. That would be very cool. But we have no idea what this means. We don't know how this will look. We don't know anything about this. We just have these, like, kind of hype things. But we have no idea what they actually will be in Pokemon Go. Alright, let's, uh, let's start the next clip. So the next part, certain areas such as parks, here's some park, nature reserves, the back of Pearson Park, Okihili, etc., will now contain more varied Pokemon species. Does this mean, A, that we will have less of just common spawns, right? Um, Pidgeys and Rattatas. So let's just stick with the same, like, kind of basis here, okay? So maybe less Pidgeys and Rattatas and maybe more cool Pokemon like more uh, geodudes and stuff like that that are also partly cloudy and could be a little more meta-relevant, could be just better Pokemon overall, etc. Or does this mean 
that a nest as we know it now, maybe the nest, the whole nest system will get another change up. Recently we had a change up um, when I had my throat thing and I had that like little video where I just kind of put music on and went over some like, like a PowerPoint basically of the new things. We had like a total nest shake up uh, about a month back. Uh, maybe we'll get another nest shake up and get m more nests and whatnot, especially with Gen 4 coming. Maybe we'll get more Gen 4 prep nests. Um, don't know. Maybe this also could mean that we get two Pokemon per nest. Like, instead of just being in Pearson Park just a crabby nest, maybe you get two Pokemon that nest in that same area. And maybe they're going to be, like, opposite ends of the spectrum. So, like, you get Krabby and you get Pikachu. Or maybe you get uh, Magmar and you get Squirtle, okay? Like two just very different Pokemon. Or maybe like varied species like in that same kind of category, like Krabby and Whalmer. Uh, both nesting at the same time in the same location. Now, I wouldn't necessarily be the f biggest fan because A, in small parks and small nests, that could mean like, what nest is this? I can't tell what nest is this. Also, if I want to grind a certain nest for a certain Pokemon, such as Krabby, it's shiny possibility, uh, I want to basically just have that Krabby. Uh, so I'm not sure what that means for Pokemon Go. And then we have the next section, which is this. Changes to Pokemon effectiveness in battle. Now this has a lot of things, and I'm going to have to kind of pause and do what I did before um, a couple times in here. Uh, we also wanted to use this opportunity to rebalance in-game battle mechanics. Something that has been wanted for a very long time by a lot of people, and a lot of people who kind of don't like Pokemon Go, is one of the things is that the, the, battle, the battle system is a little... Mm, has some to be desired. Now, personally, I don't mind it. I don't mind... I've never minded the battle system, the tap and swipe, and because this is supposed to be a mobile game, it's supposed to be fast, etc. I don't mind it. I loved the gym rework. I hated the prestige system, the old battle your own gym. I, I hated that system and I have a bronze medal in the ace trainer category because of how much I hated that system. Terrible system. I hated it. Me personally. Some people loved it. Um, I know a lot of people who are like very competitive and like raiding and whatnot. A lot of those people tended to also like the prestige system now. And uh, in the new gym system, which I personally enjoy. Uh, I've come to love going in, battling gyms, so much so that I have that I have the whole gym leader outfit for my team. Um, I have gold in almost every gym in my area. It's just, I love the new gym system. But even I will say, a change up, a rebalance, it could be cool. Here's the first point. There's, there's four points in here, and they kind of work off of each other. So let's get into this. CP values will be adjusted going forward to improve game balance. Will we finally see the downfall of King Slacking? Slacking may no longer be the king of CP. Maybe. Uh, HP values will be adjusted to close the gap between HP Pokemon, or between high HP Pokemon and low HP Pokemon. As someone who has put a lot of time and effort into my Blissey arm, okay, I have about five Blisseys that are 2800 or higher, with my Queen being a 3003 CP Blissey. Uh, Blissey, of course, is the Queen of defending gyms. Snorlax is another great gym defender. These Pokemon both rely on their HP. Um, what is going on? Okay, sorry. Um, they both rely on their HP stat, and a lot of gym defenders rely on that HP stat to kind of like make it so that it's a little harder to take down the gym. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly how this works. So we move on to the next point. So each one of these points actually kind of like goes into like a little more detail. Um, even though each one is its own separate category, it, they do play off of each other, which is cool. Pokemon defense and stamina values, so defense HP, uh, will be retroactively rebalanced. That means everything we have in our current... We've seen this happen a few times, like Lapras got a uh, 
not a buff. It got nerfed. Like, we've seen different Pokemon get nerfed over the time. Like, remember the days when Arcanine, Executor, and uh, Polyrath were really great? Lapras was a really great Pokemon, and now they're subpar. This could make them... This could shake up a lot of things in the, like, the Tier 2, Tier 3 categories. Uh, so, like, a lot of people that have, like, a lot of Dragonites and whatnot, those are Tier 1, like, Dragonite, Blissey, um, uh, Machamp. These are, like, those Tier 1 attackers and defenders and just really good Pokemon. Then you have, like, the lesser ones. Like, Moltres, in, like, in the Fire-type category, because this is the most often seen. You have Moltres and Entei over the top, Flareon just a little bit above, below them, uh, Blastburn and Charizard, and then the rest, right? So with this, maybe we get a little shakeup in the Tier 2, Tier 3 category. Um, so basically what they're doing is allowing the highly defensive Pokemon to be valuable in battle by outlasting opponents rather than simply running out, of, running out the clock. So not necessarily with Fire-type attackers, but more with defenders, right? So, uh, having Snorlax and Blissey be a little better, I guess? Like, they're not just, like, time wasters. They're gonna actually be able to do something? I guess? Um, I mean, it sounds like they're, it's basically just gonna be running out the clock. But I guess maybe make them a little better attacker at the same time? I'm, I'm really not sure. Like, this whole section just a little bit confuses me. People that are, like, really into, like, the battle mechanics of the game probably are reading this and are like, oh, I know exactly what that means. Shut up, Joe. This is great. Explain that to me, please, in the comments section below. If you know what all this means and could possibly, like, explain it to me better, let me know. Comment section below. Defense values have also been slightly retroactively reduced for most Pokemon. Most Pokemon are getting a defensive nerf. Um, didn't you just say in the previous bullet point that the defense is going to... I mean, they said rebalanced, but I mean, I thought that would make the certain Pokemon better, but cross-grade nerf in defense, okay? Um, changes like these will help narrow the gap between Pokemon with the highest defensive stats and other Pokemon. Um, maybe this is, I, I guess, just to make things a little fairer across the board, like certain Pokemon, Chansey, Blissey, Snorlax, are tanks, right? Um, maybe, I, I honestly don't know. Like, are they gonna start, like, making, like, personally, like, no one likes slacking being at the top of the list for its high HP and defensive values. Even though it's a tank of an attacker, it's, like, really high attacks at, but it's just... Bleh. So, we'll see. We'll see how all this goes. Uh, it'll be interesting, for sure. And then, you know, finally, their, their little wrap-up. Moving forward, you can expect to see further tweaks designed to help trainers and their Pokémon reach their full potential. We're looking forward to experiencing these changes with you as we explore the world together. So let's go back to Pokémon Go, right? Let's let's just go into like CP, and uh, so there hasn't been any of this so far. So as of yet, we haven't seen any of this. But let's just look at like what they might mean. Like so, we have your tier one, a lot of tier one stuff. As most level forty and people that have been around for a while have, you know, you have your tier one stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of T Tars, a lot of Snorlax and whatnot. So let's let's. So, will we see maybe, like, uh, maybe a buff to certain attacking Pokemon? Like, Pokemon that are better attackers might get a buff to, uh, go against the, like, high HP, high defense value Pokemon. So, maybe a buff to, like, Akazama Champ. Uh, maybe a nerf to Pokemon that are, like, solely defenders. Which would kind of stink because, like, people have, like, raised up Blissies and Snorlaxes because they're defensive and HP values, and just maybe they get nerfed, I guess, maybe a little bit. Um, maybe Pokemon like Dawnfan, uh, there's a couple others. Wigglytuff, I know, is a good defender. Um, there, there's a couple other ones that are just fairly good. Maybe we see a buff to Glass Cannon Pokemon, um, so that 
you know, HP and defense aren't valued as high, maybe attack stats and Pokemon that don't have really great defense or really great HP, maybe those get a buff. Um, that's going to be interesting to see. Um, maybe Jolteon and other, like, speedy. Maybe this is where we see electric types get a little buff. Um, a lot of the glass cannon Pokemon, maybe grass type Pokemon will get a little better, a little higher up there on the food chain. Um, maybe Pokemon like Blaziken, uh, maybe we see like Arcanine and the rest of like the old school OG Pokemon get a little buff, get them back into the scene. I wouldn't mind that. Is that that same meta type? Yeah, it is. Anyway, I feel like that's a good place to go ahead and call that the episode. Um, just a lot of questions, right? Just what will this mean for Pokemon Go? Um, also, like I said, I do have a Windy Weather Shiny Hunt uh, video that's coming soon to uh, the channel. And then also, we will be, uh, where's that hound now? That's, that's not too far away, actually. That's just over there. Um, anyway, like I said, that is going to be the end of the episode right there. Goodbye, update. Very excited to, very excited for the update, which was over there before. Now, honestly, I'm super excited. As you can tell, I, I'm very animated right now. And it's not just because I have caffeine. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of questions. There's, there's nothing, like, hinted. They, like, they've just said, like, hey, this stuff is coming. Don't worry about it. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I want to know now. What do you, like... How will this affect, like, this could potentially, like, with any, like, big, like, nerf or buff to, like, stats, you'll see, like, certain Pokemon rise, other Pokemon fall, um, it, it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how this all works out, and, uh, let me know your theories, let me know how you like this, um, maybe your take on some of the things, personally, I'm more interested in the, the nest migration patterns and how Pokemon will be in like parks and whatnot because that's that's what I do. I, I like going out into the parks and catching Pokemon and shiny hunting. And when Gen 4 comes out, I'll be grinding towards you know completing the Gen 4 decks. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, so the parks and that stuff interests me personally more, uh, especially because like in this area, I'm already gold. Maybe they add a Yo, what if they add a new level, like Platinum? Your boy will be out taking gems again. But I'll, I'll tell you that straight up. I will be taking all the gems. If they release, like, Platinum, <sighs> that'd be very cool. They probably won't. Um, also, of course, I, I mentioned, like, Prestiging. Uh, Prestiging, maybe, like, uh, like, with the Pokestops and how that works. That'd be very interesting. Um, but again, that's all in the patterns of Pokemon behavior and whatnot, and the gym system, and the battle rework, it's going to be interesting. Anyway, that's the, that's the end of my theorizing and whatnot. If you did like the episode, go ahead, smash that thumbs up button. If you enjoyed the series, please subscribe, and as always, God bless, and see you for another episode of Pokemon Go!